Well, it's been a little while since I've uploaded an Odin Project video. The next section is Foundations Command Line Basics. <clears throat> Introduction. Feeling scared of the command line? You're not alone. We have this image of developers staring intently at a black screen with wider green text flashing across as they wildly enter incomprehensible commands to hack into the corporate mainframe. No doubt while guzzling soda and wiping neon orange Cheetos dust off their keyboard. That black screen or window is the command line interface, CLI, where you're able to enter commands that your computer will run for you. While there's no need for you to reenact the scene above, working with the command line is a critical skill for you to learn as a developer. The command line is like our base of operations, from which we can launch other programs and interact with them. It has a syntax of its own to learn. But since you'll be entering the same commands dozens of times, you'll quickly pick up the commands you need most. In this introductory lesson to the command line, you'll learn how to navigate around your computer and how to manipulate files and directories, also known as folders, directly from the comfort of the command line. You'll soon see that this isn't as difficult as you may think. The commands you will learn in this lesson are very straightforward, so don't let the prospect of using the command line for the first time intimidate you. Test drive your terminal. Open a terminal on your computer. Linux. Open the Programs menu and search for Terminal. You can also open the terminal by pressing Ctrl-Alt-T on your keyboard. Let's try that. Ctrl-Alt-T. Yep, it does work. Okay. Mac OS. Open your Applications, Utilities folder, and find Terminal. You can also use Spotlight search to open terminal. Press command plus space to open spotlight and search for terminal. Press return to open it. Before we do anything, take a look at the following text. Who am I? This is a terminal command because it begins with the string symbol the st the or the pounds, the dollar sign, is saying, hey, Enter what follows in your terminal. This means that we must exclude the dollar sign when entering any command. In the example above, we would only enter who am I in our terminal. So if I do control alt T and I put who am I? Ah, okay. This is a common uh, in the example, we would only enter who am I in our terminal. This is a common indicator, so make sure that you aren't entering a pound sign before a command. Now that you are aware of what the pound symbol does, take your terminal for a test run. Make sure your terminal is open. Type the command mentioned above and press enter on your keyboard. It returns your username. Cool. Why learn this now? you will be making heavy use of the command line throughout this curriculum. And the upcoming installations project will need you to install many different software programs using the command line. Additionally, you will primarily be using Git within the command line. More on this later. As part of the bigger picture, you may well be using the command line on a daily basis in your career as a software developer making it an indispensable skill in your tool set. Learning Outcomes By the end of this lesson, you should be able to do the following. Describe what the command line is. Open the command line on your computer. Use the command line to navigate directories and display directory contents. 
use the command line to create a new directory and a new file. Use the command line to rename or destroy a directory and a file. Use the command line to open a file or folder in a program. Assignment. Note many of these resources assume you're using a Mac or Linux environment. If you did a previous installation lesson, you should already have Linux installed in dual boot or a virtual machine, or you might be using Mac OS. If you don't have Mac OS or any version of Linux installed, please return to the operating system installation guide. One, before diving into the command line lesson, you want to know how to create a file. You can do so with the touch command. Open your terminal and enter ls. The l is a lowercase l. ls will show you the files and folders in the current directory, or will show nothing if the current directory is empty. Create a file called test.txt by entering this in your terminal. T-O-U-C-H, touch, space, test.txt. Now enter ls once again. You should see test.txt listed in the output. You can also create more than one file at once using the touch command. Enter touch space index.html space script.js space style.css and press enter. Then ls once more. You should see the files in the output. Here is a small way that the terminal reveals its power. How long would it have taken to create all three of those files with your mouse? Thanks, Terminal. Read through Chapter 1 of Conquering the Command Line. Uh-oh. Let me pause this a second. Okay, actually, very nice, because if you look here, that's, uh, it looks like a complete book. Chapter 1 here is Basics in Navigation, so... Check that out. Using, use the command line like a pro. There's something important that you need to know about programmers. Programmers are lazy, like really lazy. When forced to do something over and over again, the odds are good that they'll figure out a way to automate it instead. The good news is that you get to take advantage of the many shor shortcuts they've created along the way. It's time to learn how to use the command line like a pro, which is to say, in a really lazy way. First, you might have already noticed that copying and pasting inside the command line doesn't work the way you'd expect. When you're inside the command line, you'll need to use Control-Shift-C, or on the Mac, Command-C, to copy. Uh, some places I think it's control C and control shift V on the Mac command V to paste and I think it's control V actually but okay for example to copy and paste commands from your browser into the command line you'll highlight the command text and use control C as usual and then paste it in your terminal using control Shift V. Test it out. All right. Um, Control Alt T gave us the terminal, right? All right. Let's. Um, let's see. It says Control C, then paste in your terminal. All right. So let's highlight this and I'll do control C sorry and now control V 
Oh, control V doesn't work there, huh? All right, let's try control shift V. Oh yeah, it works. Okay, they are right. And uh, <laughs> I was actually wrong. Uh, clear to clear the terminal screen. All right, so control C to copy, control shift V in the terminal, I understand. All right, second, you need to learn about tab completion. Seriously, this tip will save you so much time and frustration. Let's say that you're in the command line and that you need to move into a folder that is far away, something like tilde documents uh, forward slash odin dash project uh, forward slash foundations forward slash javascript forward slash calculator. That's a long command to type out and everything needs to be exactly right in order for it to work. Nope. We're way too lazy for that. Basically, by hitting tab, the command line will automatically complete commands that you've started typing once. There's only one option. For example, it's pretty common to have a documents folder and a downloads folder in the home directory. If you've typed CD space D and then press tab, the command line will let you know that it's not sure which one you want by showing you the different options that match what you've typed so far. So bash, uh, the dollar sign, cd space d space documents forward slash downloads, uh, cdd. But once you've typed in a little bit more, it will complete the name for you, making it possible to write out the full file path above by typing as little as cd doc tab o tab F tab, J tab, C A L tab, depending on what other folders exist on your computer. Test it out and get comfortable with how this works. You're going to love it. Okay, so the point here uh, Control Alt T is uh, all right, I'll do directory. So if I want to CD and say, um, let's see, PyCharm projects, put P there, doesn't give me, uh, let, press tab, and you see it gives me three choices. So Y, tab, and it puts PyCharm projects right there for me. So yeah. So the tab, I can see that it, I've used it before, so I, I knew it. All right, test it out and get comfortable. Third, there's a really handy shortcut for opening everything within a project directory. Dot. Once you've installed a text editor, you can use this shortcut to open up an entire project and all its files in one go. This shortcut is also commonly used with Git. Later on, it's covered in detail with commands like git space add space dot to add all the files inside of a directory into Git's staging area. For example, if you have VS Code installed, you can CD into the project directory and then type code space dot with a period to open up all the project files. See the next section of this lesson for a more detailed example. Uh, so the dot gets all the things. Some places star gets all the things for certain items. All right, a note on typing passwords. When using a command in the terminal that requires you to enter your password for authentic authentication, such as sudo, the characters should not be visible to you as you type them. While you might think the terminal isn't responding, don't worry. This is a security feature to protect confidential information. Like how password fields on websites use asterisks or dots. By not displaying the characters you write, the terminal keeps your password secure. 
opening files in VS Code from the command line. On Windows and Linux, you can open VS Code from the command line by typing code. And you can open folders or files by adding the name of the location after it. Code, my underscore awesome underscore project forward slash. Let's see, VS Code by typing code. Open folders or files by adding the name after. Oh, I see. So if you have the word code, put a space and then put the name of the file uh, down and it'll open it. For Mac OS users, you can do this too, but you need to set it up. After installing VS Code, launch it any way you're comfortable with. Once it's running, open the command palette with Command plus Shift plus P. In the little dialog that appears, type Shell Command. One of the choices that appears will be Shell Command. Install Code Command in Path. Select that option and restart the terminal if you have it open. Exercise. In this exercise, you will practice creating files and directories and deleting them. You'll need to enter the commands for this exercise in your terminal. If you can't recall how to open a terminal, scroll up for a reminder. Uh, Control-Alt-T, I guess. All right, one, create a new directory in your home directory with the name test. Navigate to the test directory. Create a new file called test.txt. Hint, use the touch or echo command. Open your newly created file in VS Code and make some changes. Save the file and close it. Navigate back out of the test directory. Delete the test directory. That's it. You're done with command line basics. If you commit to doing most things from the command line from here on out, these commands will become second nature to you. Moving and copying files is much more efficiently done through the command line even if it feels like more of a hassle at this point. Okay, additional resources. This section contains helpful links to other content. It isn't required, so consider it supplemental. supplemental. The Art of the Command Line is a complete beginner's pro maker. It serves as an open source repository this also has a lot of pro tips. The online book, Learn Enough Command Line to be Dangerous, is a great resource for mastering the command line. Chapter 1 is free and provides a good introduction to command line tools. The rest of the book is not free and goes into more depth than you really need at this point, but feel free to buy and read the rest of the book if you like. ExplainShell.com is a great resource if you want to deconstruct a particularly strange shell command or learn how Bash works through guess and check. Unix Linux Command Cheat Sheet contains a list of important commands that you can refer to regularly as you become familiar with using Linux. You can print it out so you can have a physical copy with you when you're not at your computer. Command line flashcards by flashcards.github.io. Video series from Learn Not Linux TV contains 24 videos explaining the basics of the command line. Videos are brief enough for beginners, but at the same time, detailed enough to get you started and light your inner curiosity. Knowledge Check. This section contains questions for you to check your understanding of this lesson. If you're having trouble answering the questions below on your own, review the material above to find the answer. What is the command line? How do you open the command line on your computer? How can you navigate to a particular directory? 
Where will CD on its own navigate you to? Where will CD with two dots navigate you to? How do you display the name of the directory you are in currently? How do you display the contents of the directory you are currently in? How do you create a new directory? How do you create a new file? How do you destroy a directory or file? And how do you rename a directory or a file? And that concludes this section. Thank you.